Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the Epox 8K3A Plus motherboard. This package includes the cables, comes with also two extra USB ports, the manuals, as well as RAID drivers and other drivers on a CD and software and the motherboard. This is the VIA KT333 chipset based motherboard. Right here is where you will be installing your Duroc or Athlon CPU. Also right here you have three banks of DDR memory. You can have up to one gigabyte in each bank for a total on this board of three gigabytes of memory. Right here is your floppy controller connector. Right here is your two IDE channels. Now you can also connect the fast ATA133 hard drives to this controller. Right here is where the RAID is located. This is the high point RAID and also down right here is where you will be connecting it to the case. You can connect things like the hard drive LEDs, the power LEDs, the reset switches, the power switches and so on. This right here is called the post display, the power on self test. It's a great diagnostic tool if you're having problems with your motherboard. Also right here you have six PCI slots, one AGP slot, and there is one, two, three places on this board to plug extra fans on. This board also comes with six channel audio, parallel port, two COM ports, you have two USB ports here as well as that optional one you can plug in for a total of four USB ports on the board and you have places right here to plug your keyboard and your mouse. Let me first go into the advanced chipset features and in here you can set such things as the DRAM clock drive control, the AGP and P2P bridge control. You can also go down there as well and enable or disable the system BIOS cacheable or the video RAM cacheable. First let me go into the DRAM clock slash drive control. In here is basically your settings for both the memory and also kind of like the front side bus because you have a DRAM clock here and what this DRAM clock will do is add an extra 33 megahertz to your front side bus setting which I'll show you in the frequency voltage control area of this BIOS a little later. Now going back in here you'll see that at the very top you have a few options here normal, fast, fastest and turbo and this is again memory settings for your DDR memory. I'm using crucial 2700 memory here. You can see you have it set at 166. Also you can go in here of course and set the DRAM timing, you can either go manual or you can go by speed. If you go by manual, of course, you can adjust such things as the, the, the SD RAM cycle length, the bank interleave, and also more things down here, as you can see. So there's many, many options here, certainly, for memory control. Going on here within the advanced chipset features, the area called the AGP P2B bridge control. In here you can go in and adjust the AGP aperture size. You can adjust the AGP mode to four, two times, whatever your video card is. Also you can go down to the bottom here and adjust the AGP fast right. The integrated peripherals part of this BIOS houses such things as the Visa on-chip IDE device, the onboard PCI device, the Super I.O. device, and also has things like enabling and disabling your USB controllers, enabling support for USB keyboard, USB mouse, as well as the IDE hard drive block mode. Now, let me go into the first one here, the VIA on-chip IDE device. Basically, in here you can go in and enable or disable the different channels, channel 1 and channel 2. This is basically for the hard drives again. And you can go, of course, down here and adjust things to automatic, or you can go mode 1 all the way up to mode 4. Going on here within the integrated peripherals, you'll see that there's an onboard PCI device. Now, this board, again, comes with the onboard audio and the onboard RAID, so you have an option here of going in here and actually enabling or disabling those onboard devices. And within the Super I.O. device part of this integrated peripherals, this is pretty common. Of course, you can go in here, enable or disable your floppy drive controller, your COM ports, your Palo ports, your game ports, and so on. This BIOS also has a PC health status. You can go in here 
and adjust such things as the show PC health in the post so you can actually see it you can basically see the temperature of your system your CPU your fan speeds in the post screen when you're just booting up your system you can also enable or disable such things as if there is a no fan the system will shut down so if your fan fails that's certainly a good thing also of course you can set a shutdown system beep and also you can set a CPU warning temperature where it will warn you at a certain temperature and also here at the bottom you can enable a shutdown temperature so let's say it's 70 degrees C your fan fails and will shut down the system certainly a very good safety feature to enable that you're not going to fry your CPU another very important part of this BIOS is the frequency voltage control in here you can go in and adjust the front side bus now if you recall I was saying that you could adjust it back into the advanced chipset features in the DRAM clock drive control in here for instance if you go 166 in here that will add 33 megahertz to the memory front side bus when you set it in here for example I have my front side bus here now at 147 so what does that mean well add 33 plus 147 you'll get 180 megahertz for a front side bus I am using a Duron 1 gigahertz at approximately now close on 1.2 gigahertz and the memory again is at 180 megahertz and the memory I am using is the crucial 2700 memory now further down here I'm using a Duron and of course you can very easily do the pencil trick and really adjust any kind of multiplier you want all the way from 6 all the way here up to 15 in this particular BIOS I have mine set at 8 because the multiplication works multiply 8 times 147 you get approximately 1.2 gigahertz that's pretty much all I can get out of this door on 1 gigahertz CPU now further down here you have a vCore voltage which you can adjust and this is something incredible actually because overclockers will love this particular area it goes all the way up to 2.2 volts right inside this BIOS so that's fantastic no voltage modifications needed this does it right inside the BIOS at 2.2 volts which is extremely high I would not recommend really going above 1.95 with a good copper cooler if you go beyond that in the voltage really you want to think about getting into water cooling or really extreme cooling now even further down here within this BIOS a part of the frequency voltage control you have the dim default voltage and of course you can add voltages to this you can go all the way up to point seven zero so the default voltage in this case is two point five so that equals three point two volts here for the memory which is fantastic again you get a good overclock from doing this because you really increase the voltage on both the CPU and the memory which are really the, really two crucial things that you want to really up the voltage on to really be able to overclock your particular CPU the benchmark program that I will be using is called Psy Software Sandra and this is the downloadable demo version from their website I'll just be doing a couple of CPU benchmarks as well as a memory benchmark keep in mind here I'm just using a 1 gigahertz Duron overclocked to approximately 1.2 gigahertz of course you would get much much better results from a really really powerful Athlon XP or even an Athlon T-Bird let me run those benchmarks now first have a look at the CPU benchmark you can see here the result is 30331 MIPS and of course comparing this to a Pentium 4 2 GHz at 3688 not a whole lot off here however again consider that this is an only a Duron 1 gigahertz at approximately 1.2 gigahertz also looking at the multimedia benchmark here the result is 6012 and finally here looking at the memory result of 2270 megabytes per second in comparison to DDR memory on an Intel i850 chipset based board that result is 2450 so certainly this memory result is not far behind 
even the RAM bus memory results. So certainly a good result there from...